Hey, Dirt Farmer Jay here from DirtFarmerJay.com. I love this bandsaw. It's a hard worker and is probably one of the most important tools. I'd say it even competes with the table saw, but there's a feature on it that came from the factory I couldn't stand, and that is this tension adjustment knob. Hard to reach, hard on the wrist, very fatiguing. I found a really good solution to that at a very economical price. Stay tuned. Hey, Dirt Farmer Jay here from DirtFarmerJay.com. Having great tooling in the shop is a blessing. You can do a lot of different things, and a bandsaw is such a hardworking tool. But to properly use it, you have to tension the blade correctly, and then when you're done with the work for the day, you need to take the tension off of the tool, otherwise it's really hard on the tires, the framework, and the blade itself. And that is done by this tension knob. Now this is a 16 inch, it's not a 14 inch, so there's quick lever release type of systems out there, but nothing available for this Grizzly 16 inch. But cranking this back and forth to take the tension off at the end and then bringing it back up, oh my word, very fatiguing, hard on the wrist, you're in a blind spot, you're kind of up on your tippy toes, and I thought there's got to be a better way. Well, there is. Let me show you what I did. All right, well, let's open up the top cover here. And as you're aware, pretty standard setup on a bandsaw is that you have a lifter mechanism that makes this wheel travel up or down, therefore increasing or decreasing tension on the blade that runs around it. Well, as you can see here, you're cranking this up or down. It takes a lot of turns to move and you're up Many times you have to get a stool and that sort of thing. I thought there's got to be a better way. Fortunately, there is. I was able to find this crank system. This is uh, from Bighorn. There is a link in the description below. This is about a $30 investment, $35 investment. With some very mild modification on this, you can get this to work absolutely beautifully. So what I did is I took the Bighorn crank, which right now, when you take the handle off, this shaft is 13 inches, 33 centimeters. What you'll need to do is cut it down an inch and a half to 11 and a half or 29 centimeters, regrind a flat on it for a place for that Allen uh, key or that Allen screw to bite in. And now the crank will sit about the right level, not up too high. And now you can crank it. Well, let's get to work. We'll go ahead and cut this down and reinstall it. Let's begin by removing the old height adjuster knob here. So I'm gonna unscrew this and keep this from dropping. And as you can see, it takes a lot of turns to get this to let go. One eternity later. All right, now the next thing we'll need to do is take this compression nut, which is actually what provides lift against the tension spring, and loosen that off and lift this out. All right, let's undo that. There we go. Unscrew this the rest of the way, lift it out, and as you do, hold on to the spring, and out comes that whole knob. All right, let's get our modified Bighorn crank and we'll install it in now instead. All right, we now have our shortened Bighorn unit here with the flat that we've ground into it. We're gonna go ahead and insert it back in the handle, bring the handle flush right here, and let's go ahead and tighten it in. Nice, okay. All right, so we're now gonna insert this through the top and let's just start stacking the items we're gonna need on it. One is the, that collar. The second thing is one of the washers that go by the spring, that compress against the spring. The next is the spring itself. And the next is the next washer with the indent part towards the springs. And now we'll adjust this till it drops through the hole, through all that assembly, and down in to the lift block. Now we'll go ahead and crank this to get, get some depth on it. 
until this is about the place you want to be reaching to put it. It's about right there. Now we'll go ahead and tighten that lifter, that compression ring up here. All right, let's go ahead and re-tighten this at the right position with the crank will clear on the top. And that's the position the crank will stay above the top casing and really get that home tight. So you're gonna have to come from a couple angles because this is a tight space right here. Because that's right behind the wheel. There it is. Okay, so now we're gonna lift and you can see this is not changing position uh, because of where we've locked that in. So now we'll go ahead and retension it. All right, with a simple modification, minimum expense, we now have replaced out this stock tension handle with this crank, which is much more efficient uh, and just a much more a pleasure to use. So this also reduces the temptation of leaving the machine tensioned after you're done with a work. You can simply count the rotations back, like let's say five rotations back to where you had it tensioned properly before. And then when you come back to use the machine also, you can rotate it back around five and then just double tech, uh, test the tension, make sure it's in the guides correctly. Now a little technique that I use that may be handy to you to remember whether or not I've got the machine tension or it's ready to use, is I use one of these welder magnets right here. If I put it in front of that, that means that I left the machine untensioned and it's not ready to use. So before I'm gonna use it, and right now you can see that is pretty doggone loose. Before I'm gonna tension it, I'm gonna take this, put that up here, crank my whatever it is. In this case, it was about six cranks seven cranks and I'll test that back, but this is a lot more efficient and is really gonna help you maintain the machine much, uh, much more efficiently. Here's another thing I know will interest you for your bandsaw, and that's putting these urethane tires on it. Check out this video where we show you how to install these tires without boiling them in water, which actually can weaken them according to the manufacturer and you can put these on cleanly without a lot of hassle. And then check out this other video also that YouTube and us think is perfect for you. Hey, thanks for joining me today. Until the next time, this is Dirt Farmer Jay from DirtFarmerJay.com.